Hey everyone, I'm Jess Crawford. I'm a Masters of Nursing student on Treaty 1 territory. I'm going to tell you about the work that myself, alongside two other fantastic nurse researchers, did um, to explore the concept of interpersonal transphobia uh, as it pertains to nursing. So as a gender diverse person and as a nurse, I know that nursing has specific ways of thinking that sort of omits trans and gender diverse people or erases us. And so having experienced this personally and professionally, I wanted to create a map of what interpersonal transphobia looks like to help nurses better understand their role in disrupting interpersonal transphobia. So there are several forms of transphobia, such as internalized or systemic, um, but we felt it essential to define interpersonal transphobia to offer a way to empower individual nurses to unlearn transphobia. Um, and so defining transphobia and interpersonal transphobia in particular is critical because without a definition, it remains hidden or erased, and that's how bias is cultivated. And when we don't recognize the harms in our actions and thoughts, uh, people on the margins suffer like trans and gender diverse folks. So our concept exploration, uh, we purposefully selected 24 sources, allowing us to visually represent interpersonal transphobia for nurses. Uh, we prioritized literature from Canada and the US and looked for several pieces of information, such as the influences, consequences, um, and nursing implications. And so we're going to look at the definitions um, so there was about seven definitions that we found, explicit ones. They weren't specific to interpersonal transphobia uh, or to nursing per se. Um, and so nearing the end of our uh, work, the WPATH released their, their newest guidelines uh, and this definition was offered, um, the definition on the slide here. And so while no one definition that we found was representative of interpersonal transphobia, um, WPATH definition uh, is in alignment with, with our findings and so that's why we offer it here. And so this is the resulting diagram uh, and we're going to go through each component here. So even before we conceptualized interpersonal transphobia, we know that interpersonal transphobia is whatever somebody says it is. And we really want to highlight this because while we've created this visual outline, um, trans and gender diverse people hold valuable knowledge and experiences that cannot always be ca uh, captured in such a diagram or, or a definition. Um, and there's also been you know, a number of, of efforts to create tools that measure interpersonal transphobia. But again, these can fall short and not be representative. And so ultimately, we need to believe trans voices and experiences. We also looked at the antecedents or the conditions that come before interpersonal transphobia. These are more systems level things such as uh, cisnormativity, erasure and stigma. And the characteristics or attributes then or prejudicial attitudes and discriminatory behaviors. Um, and a very recent example is uh, of trans interpersonal transphobia in nursing is the hearings from the British Columbia College of Nurses and Midwives. Um, the BCCNM are evaluating the conduct of a nurse for the discriminatory actions um, by posting transphobic comments on social media. So consequences of interpersonal transphobia for patients can ultimately mean life or death. Um, interpersonal transphobia can lead to internalized transphobia, which increases, as we know, the, the rates of suicide um, and mental illness. It often leads to gender diverse people avoiding healthcare or mistrusting healthcare providers such as nurses. Interpersonal transphobia can prevent trans people from getting emergency or preventative care, um, again, leading to increased morbidity and mortality. Uh, and there was one article that discussed some possible unexpected positive outcomes of transphobia. Um, however, evidence is, is quite, um, quite certain that there are dire consequences of transphobia, of discrimination towards trans and gender diverse folks. But these positive um, reactions speak to the resilience of the community. Um, and negative consequences for nurses, whether intentional or not, um, when they engage in interpersonal transphobia, they can face consequences. So this includes providing inequitable care for trans patients, risking malpractice, such as a case for the BCCNM, um, or larger legal consequences for infringing on human rights. And so there are several things that nurses and healthcare professionals can do um, to recognize and disrupt interpersonal transphobia. In Canada and the US, um, nurses have a number of practice obligations that we need to do to maintain our licenses. Um, and so nurses must be critically reflective. Um, this means also identifying our knowledge gaps and our biases, um, and then seeking educational opportunities to improve our knowledge. 
Um, nurses, we need to look for and request education on gender affirming care. Um, for those who don't know, gender affirming care is life saving, culturally safe care that supports and validates somebody's gender. Um, and this is valuable for trans and non trans patients, so for everybody. Um, and some components of gender affirming care include not making assumptions about people's bodies, which is really a, a big problem in nursing and in healthcare in general, using neutral and inclusive language, and understand that trans and gender diverse folks are unique individuals with unique health goals. Um, and so as nurses, we are advocates and we are advocates for our patients and we need to advocate for gender diverse patients, people on the margins um, and the inclusion of gender affirming care. And this includes at the healthcare setting and within nursing education and policy and research. Um, and so speaking of research, um, there's a little bit of nursing knowledge on trans and gender diverse people, but this is really just beginning. There's so much more work that needs to be done um, to include and engage and advance uh, trans and gender diverse people in nursing research. Um, so more nursing research is needed to account for this evolution, the ongoing evolving language of trans and gender diverse people um, and the different contexts. It's really important. What's relevant in, in Canada where I'm situated might not be relevant in other places. And so we really need to have specific contexts and that includes intersectionality as well. And so those are some of the recommendations and the findings from our from our review. Um, we have been accepted for publication in Advances in Nursing Science uh, and are waiting for our issue. So please contact us if you have any questions and check out our publication. Take care.